Hello, I'm Steve with Touch of the Master's Hand, Holy Spirit Ministries. I wanted to talk today about a couple scriptures the Lord laid on my heart uh, earlier this morning, about 1.30 actually. Uh, told me this is where he wants the church to be. It was Acts 2, 19 through 21. And he said, and this is where the church is at, 2 Timothy 2, 19 through 21. But then he highlighted some of the scriptures around there as I was reading it. But so I'm really going to read from 17 on down because it correlates to it. But I want you to kind of keep in mind the 219 through 21 focus. And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out of my spirit on all flesh, that your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see, see visions, your old men shall dream dreams. And on my men servants and on my maiden servants, I will pour out of my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. This is 19. I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor and smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. And it shall come to pass that whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Okay, let's jump over to Timothy. Second Timothy. I guess I should have marked him, guys. Sorry. Second Timothy 2, 19. Nevertheless, the solid foundation of God stands, having this seal. The Lord knows those who are his. And let everyone whose name, the name of, who names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. But in a great house there are, men only, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay, some for honor and some for dishonor. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, he will be a vessel of for honor, sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. Then the Lord kind of took me down the path in both of these, but that's where I came up with Acts 17 too. But um, in this one, in Timothy, you know, <clears throat> talking about both, you know, the wheat and the tear kind of grow together, guys. Not everyone's going to make it in. I'm not, I don't want, want to say that. But it's the truth. Okay? So, some for honor, some for dishonor. So, we have to be very strategic who we minister to. Don't cast your pearls before swines. Who's the Lord telling you? Who's got you laid on your heart? You know, be purposeful. Very specific, strategic. We're supposed to sanctify ourselves. Because he told me three and four all three, all, all of three, and four all the way down to five was where the, was where the church at, was at today, what we're living in, perilous times. You know, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure that out. All you got to do is turn on the news or look around or just, I mean, it's just trash and junk and filth and dirt and not very pleasant stuff going on. A lot of just stuff. But he doesn't want us to get caught up in that. He wants us to get caught up in the spiritual realm. He wants to sanctify ourselves, set us, set us, us to set us ourselves apart. Um, he's got a purpose, specific purpose for it. I'm just going to kind of leave these scriptures out there and let you guys kind of just chew on them, uh, run them through the process. Pray about them, you know, because really, I'm just a delivery guy. That's it. I'm not, you know. And so I'm going to do my part in the obedience. Um, so the thing in Acts that he was talking about, he told me, one of the things he told me about the outpouring of the Spirit in the last days was he, he, and I'm going to change it. I got a friend that's about to change it, but I'm going to change the, the title on my um, YouTube channel from Revival in America to Jesus in America. I'm just going to leave it plain and simple. Because um, he said, take out the word revival 
and take out movement out of the church. He said, because he's not trying to revive something that's dead and something that happened 100 years ago and make it work. It's a new wine, guys. It's a new dispensation. The Bible says there's nothing new under the sun. It's a time. It's always been there, but it's just a timing for God, and it's a season, and it's things that are going on. So, you know, a lot of this stuff is, and the other thing he told me about it was, you know, this is what he told me today, but he told me part of it a couple weeks ago and part of it this morning, but he said he's had enough of the fluff and stuff. That's what he told me this morning. Early, early in the morning. I wanted to sleep, guys. Trust me. At 1.30 in the morning, you know, got to, went to bed at 9. I, I was tired. I didn't want to get up, but I had my coffee already made. I'm drinking coffee at 1.30 in the morning. Why do I want to get up at 1.30 in the morning? Because the Lord told me to. He woke me up, so that's what I had to do. The obedience piece. But, And then he said, he's had enough of the fluff and stuff of the church world. Of course, you've had enough of the world, definitely. But the church world is in trouble. We've created this mess. And he said, he's had enough of the fluff and stuff and us building serfs, turfs, and kingdoms that aren't of him, aren't of me. That's what he said, I me, I'm sorry. Um, so, you know, serfs is a whole, I mean, that's, look at a lot of the pious garbage that goes on in this culture, religious, that ain't, that ain't even really a, that's, that's not even a really a good word. It's like wanting a whole class of people to follow them, give them money. Do that, you know, it's like the turf is like, look at what I did with this building or this, uh, this ministry or this, you know, look what I did. Really? What did you do? You know? And then the kingdom is kind of like, I'm the king, you know, I'm, I'm better than, better than a lot of pious garbage. You read your Bible, read Matthew 20. Equality, guys, we're all the same. Listen to the scriptures, read them. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. We can't do anything without them. It, it, it's all a lot of it's about me, I, this, that, needs, wants. Look what I'm doing. God's going to get the glory, guys. It's battle's going to be won in the street right down in the nitty gritty grunge. Hospital rooms, nobody's gonna see you. Back alleys where drug acts are, nobody's gonna see you. Jail houses, nobody's gonna see you. You're not gonna get to be in spotlight. A lot of the stuff that's on the internet is garbage and trash, but a lot, some of it's kind of hitting it pretty hard. About a lot of churches, it is like a big rock concert. Who's got the better band? Bunch of, bunch of garbage and crap. You know, claiming to be a move of God. It's like, man, told me, he said, it's time for people in the ministry to get over themselves. And he took me to 2 Corinthians 7, 14. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, imagine that. Me too, guys. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not immune to this. It hit me too, right smack dab in the forehead. So, like I said, I'm just a delivery guy. So I'm going to start just delivering and telling what, tell them what the, saying it, what the Lord tells me to say. I'm trying to be arrogant, ignorant, objective, I mean, uh, confrontational, anything. I'm not, I'm not, I'm just going to do it. Uh, you know, I'm not trying to be offensive. Any of that. That's not my goal. I don't want it to be anything about me. I just, what he tells me to, to, to do and say, and I'm just going to do it. I'm in the obedience mode. <clears throat> so anyhow, um, those are some of the scriptures I got this morning. Um, comment on my YouTube. Uh, 
you know, likes, dislikes. You can email me directly at steveyoungs from yahoo.com. Uh, please share these videos with others, and God bless y'all. Y'all have a great, wonderful day. Um, I'm going to try to put out some more scriptures. I'm trying to do it every day, but it just kind of doesn't seem to be happening. So it's a lot going on, seemingly. Um, so anyhow, uh, look at that one. Look at the one video. Please share that one with because it, it, it was a year and a half ago that the Lord told me this. But how God sees America in abortion, you know, because that's kind of a hot button right now. Um. And we're quick to slap lab labels on people, which abortion, sorry to say, but abortion is murder. We do slap a label on, but the church dropped the ball on it, guys. There's a solution to it. Jesus. It is about choice. Choose Jesus. That's what he told me to put on there. Choose Jesus. Choose life, not death. We need to step up, guys. Ramp it up a little bit. And quit being caught up in building the church in a building in a coliseum. Might as well be a mausoleum. A lot of them, guys, it's dead works. It's, there's no spirit there. It's just like, man, guys, get a grip, guys and gals. You know, it's not going to be about us. It's about you guys. It's about his body, of course. But the people in the ministry got lent. We do have to get over ourselves. It can't be about us. It can't be, you know, spotlights and just, I say 100,000 people or five, seven, five, seven, you know, a lot of garbage goes into that, guys. Just get it done. Like Larry the Cable Guy, just do it. And move on. What the Lord's telling you to do. Quit trying to get the glory for yourselves. Kind of like Gideon's army. That's what the Lord, why the Lord pared it down to 300. There's more to it than that. But because he said Gideon had 33,000, he said, that's too many. I can't let you win the battle because then they'll take the glory. They'll think they did it. We think we did it. Look what I'm doing for God. Not really. Look what God did for you. His son, salvation. I just... So many things. It's like, man, guys, we got it kind of backwards a little bit. So really, love you guys. Um, let's look at some of my other messages. They all kind of fit. They all go along the same. Eventually, they go to the same theme. You know, value. What's your value? Which was God so valued the world. And then guess what? It was Jesus. That's how much he valued you. Our value. Each and every one of y'all. Like I said, Matthew 20, the equality piece. All the same, cuts through gender, race, all the stuff, pretty much. His glory, how we're his glory, when Jesus lives in us, it's time to shine, guys. The world is going <laughs> down pretty fast. I mean, of course, the internet kind of speeds things up a little bit, or so it seems, and cell phones and all this other stuff that's going on kind of seems to make it seem, you know, to be going faster. But Jesus was like, come on, out of that world, sanctify yourselves. That's part of the, what I just read. You know, we're in a last days, we're in a perilous time, we're in lovers of men, pleasures, and, you know, I'm going to end with this. I went to the store yesterday. I went to three stores because I had stuff that I had to get from three different places. Went to Whole Foods. Went to Sam's to get some stuff for work. For my wife's work. Um, and where else did I go? Walmart. But then I go to other stores too. And you pick one. Office Depot, Target, Home Depot, wherever. Big. Some of them are big warehouses, pallets, just full of stuff. Sam's at Christmas time at four or five hundred dollar Christmas trees up front. It's like, really? It's gonna, you know, but people do buy that stuff. But and it's like every kind of food you could think of. Well, great, awesome, convenient, easy, easy peasy. That's kind of where we're at. That's how the church is. They want it easy, everything fluff and stuff, and just their way and a 30-minute sermon and in and out and 
looking at their watch and I'm, where are we going to go eat and whatever, you know, just mind not on, not on him. Three years ago, there was an ice storm in Dallas, three or four, maybe four years ago. And everything shut down by, by where we were living. Thank God there was a Brahms a couple miles away. The Batarian, my wife and I lived off of Brahms, coffee in the morning time and Brahms because it was open. But there was a Kroger's down the street that was open too. But I went in there not too many hours after the storm started, you know, sometime that same day. Very treacherous, couldn't even hardly walk across the parking lot without slipping. Nothing on the shelves, gone, empty, wiped out. So, you know, what are we going to do if all this, if the trucks just stop or if Walmart goes under? Or, you know, there's so much that we're missing, guys. We've got to get our focus on him. Not on this world and things all around us because it's kind of crashing down, guys. I'm not the prophet of doom and gloom and all that could but i'm not going down there that's just not where god has us. it's more of a hope and a joy and a grace and turn your life to him put your faith in him because he's calling us come on come on come on so what about all this other stuff that's going on really honestly but you know it's like i am going to end with this um i know some people that you know they're probably right. I mean, I'm pretty sure, you know, and look what he did for Joseph with the cult, you know, he, you know, planned and prepared and God prepared a place for him for the famine. Okay. So they're, you know, and they're both friend, friends of some friends and people and other people, I'm sure you've heard them too. Famine coming and all this stuff that's coming. Well, you know, stacking up food, guns, clothing, whatever. And like, okay, but that's just not me guys. Cause it's like, I got buckets of food beans or whatever, okay, great, awesome. But you gotta have water to soak them in. You know, you guys, you gotta stack up water. What are you gonna cook them in? You know, I live in Dallas, there's millions of people, there's not millions of trees, the trees are, aren't gonna last a couple days, a week, you know? I mean, it's like, the list could just go on and on and on. It's like, man, I'm just, we've got to put our trust in him. And not stuff. So that's part of the sanctification. Separating ourselves from the world. The cares and the life of this life. So anyhow. I try not to get long. Long but there's just so much to share. That's why I'm writing another book. So in the next book that's coming out. All you have to do is email me. Um, it's coming out March. First week of March. Um. That one's going to be raw, but I'll still send you a copy. Just email me at steveyoungstrom at yahoo.com. It's Jesus Christ in you, the hope of glory. And now when Jesus lives in us, Jesus was God's glory. We become his glory. So it's time for the church to shine. The world's going to crater and fall apart and wonder what's going on with us because we're going to be bright and shiny and full of him so that he can get the glory, but not us. So, anyhow, love you guys. Uh, a lot of my got a lot on my plate, my mind, things that the Lord's dealing with me. Um, need a lot of prayer, guys, because I got a lot going on. I'm like, man, God, a little help here, processing all this stuff. I've got books I've been writing stuff down in. Here's one of them. Uh, lots of dreams. Visions, which I've got a book out about the visions, but came out in 2015, and I'll send you a copy if you want. Just email me again, steveyoungstromyah.com. It's on Amazon for 15 bucks, or, you know, you like the book, send me 15 bucks, whatever. I don't, you know, or I'll just send you a copy. Um, so, love you guys. Uh, talk to you soon. I just kind of got a lot to say, but I... And I know I need to kind of cut it short. So anyhow, we love you guys. Um, have a great, awesome night. And we'll talk to you soon. Or day.